Definitely a bit of an odd night in MLB DFS where we have some really fun names on this slate. Guys who have won Cy Youngs, could win Cy Youngs in the very near future and stuff like that. But for one reason or another, a lot of them have pretty major red flags, which does force us to dig down a bit deeper and decide, can we still use these guys despite these red flags? And honestly, I think no for a couple of them. So we're going to break down what those red flags are, how it should impact how we view those guys, and more to get you ready for Monday night in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shop. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and FanDuel Research. I am Jim Sonis. I am a digital media managing editor for FanDuel Research. Here to break down Monday's eight-game main slate with lock set for 7, 10 p.m. Eastern for today. couple weather notes on the slate, both of which are minor. First one is that there's a chance of rain in New York for the Mets and the Pirates. I think they'll be good to go, but check back on that one later on. Similar forecast in Atlanta, where we have some scattered showers, potentially there for the Braves and the Yankees, but even lower rain odds than in New York. So I would say both those games should be good to go. We're checking back on later, especially because both those games have the highest temperatures on the main slate. Uh, so that is good for batting, but should be all systems go for tonight across the board. We'll dig into what that means, why the pitching options are kind of weird for tonight, and much more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are not too far away from NFL season. The Heat Check will be back for that twice weekly, breaking down a recap show and a preview show as well to get you ready for all you need to know for NFL DFS each and every week, along with USC for select events, PGA for the final two events of the FedEx Cup playoffs coming up as well, all right here in the same feed. So go search for that wherever you get your podcasts. And don't forget, you can find the solo shot as well on the FanDuel YouTube page and on FanDuel TV+. Plus. Baseball season is heating up, so get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book, because right now new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. FanDuel is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Plus, when you win, you'll get paid instantly. So don't miss your chance to swing big with $150 in bonus bets, win or lose, when you make your first $5 bet. FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in seven days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. In Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, one 877 hope and wire text hope and why. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview for this Monday slate, Tyler Glass now checks in with the highest salary. at Vandal, he's at $10,700. Followed by Max Freed here at $10,600. Max Scherzer is ten five. dollars Logan Gilbert, $10,000. Hugh Darvish, ninety-seven. dollars Merrill Kelly comes in at $9,300 with Brady Singer at ninety one. dollars Patrick Sandoval and Miles Michaelis are the others. Uh, Miles Michaelis, I should say, are the others at $8,000 or higher. Now, the big concerns tonight are going to be Freed and Glass. Now, we'll talk about them in things to watch because I think their pitch counts are going to be kind of wonky. And they're the top two guys in the slate from a salary perspective. But I think both of them have big enough red flags with regards to length where I kind of want to look elsewhere. Scherz is the one guy of that trio who doesn't have those big red flags. Now, he does get the Angels at home, which is not a good matchup for his floor because they've got good hitters on that roster, but it's not a bad matchup for ceiling. So I do like Scherzer for DFS as a result. The Angels have a 113 at WRC plus against righties in the current active roster. Hit for a lot of power, but they also have a 25% strikeout rate. 
And Scherzer looked pretty good recently. He's made two starts with the Rangers. He has 15 strikeouts in 13 innings. Really good bat at ball beta. And the results have been pretty good too. Across the full season, Scherzer has a 27% strikeout rate with a 13% swinging strike rate. I've got Scherzer projected for 7.4 strikeouts, which is the highest number on the slate once you account for the pitch count for Glass now specifically. So I do feel good ranking Scherzer first as a result. It's not like some slant dunk situation by any means, but it is a tough matchup as well. But I think once you consider the issues for free and Glass now, I do want to put Max Scherzer number one. So we can't go to Scher- Glass now, can't go to free lease based on my thought process here. So let's talk about Logan Gilbert as being the number two stud for tonight. And he's inconsistent, but he definitely has upside. And I think that's enough where we can at least give him a swing here. He's facing the Royals, which is a big part of why I am into uh, Gilbert first night. They have a 92 WRC plus against righties. They've got rough plate discipline numbers, even if they don't strike out now as much as they used to. And Gilbert's had a weird year where earlier on this year, his peripherals were really good, but his results were rough. Now the results are getting better, but the peripherals aren't as good. My most relevant sample on Gilbert is 14 starts where he's had more splitters and fewer sliders. In the first 13 starts here, he never had more than seven strikeouts, which isn't a ton for DFS. Even when you, you know, look at Glass Down Freed, if it weren't, if it were just that, I'd probably be looking at them potentially here over, over Gilbert for the second stud spot. But then last time out, Gilbert had 12 strikeouts against the Padres, and it did co- coincide with a spike in his velocity. So if Gilbert figured something out, Maybe he can carry that over into tonight's matchup, which would be a good thing for him from a DFS perspective. That game was at home. This one is on the road, and Gilbert's strikeout rate is two percentage points higher at home than it is on the road. So a bit of a dip there, but not a huge gap in that regard. So I don't know which Gilbert we'll see tonight. Maybe we'll see the high strikeout one from last week. Maybe we'll see kind of the boring but effective one that we saw before that. But I think he's worth a swipe regardless because... He can have spike games, whereas I don't think a ton of guys on the slate really can. You Darvish maybe could, but he's in a tough matchup too at home with the Orioles. So we'll go Gilbert because uh, his matchup is a lot easier with the Royals. Among the value plays, I'm super intrigued by Grayson Rodriguez at $7,500. His matchup is not fun because he's facing the Padres and they draw a lot of walks. But Rodriguez is pitching really well right now. Before he got demoted to AAA, Rodriguez started to lean on his four-seam fastball or off. And obviously, that didn't fix everything because he had a really bad start in his second start there and still got demoted. But we've seen that approach come with Rodriguez back in his second stint. He's looked much better in this five-start sample. His ERA is 3.45. He hasn't gotten a ton of strikeouts, but he's faced the Dodgers, Rays, Yankees, Blue Jays, and Astros. That is an absolutely like brutal schedule for Rodriguez to face. And even while facing those teams, he had a 13.4% swing and strike rate. So Rodriguez is getting whiffs even against stiff competition. And he's getting a good number of ground balls too. When you combine that together, Rodriguez has a 4.20 skill interactive ERA, even when you include those two games before his demotion. These are also super important games to the Orioles. You know, they matter for them. They're letting him go super deep in games. He's gone 97, 96, and 93 pitches past three starts, and I think they need him. I think that Rodriguez will have a big game here pretty soon, and it might not be tonight because it's a very tough matchup, but to have a guy with that, a big game in his range of outcomes for $7,500 is really fun. So I'm going to be on Rodriguez tonight as a value play. I think it's a weird enough slate where that's justifiable given that there are some red flags around a lot of the big studs, so... I think that Rodriguez is very much in play and a guy I'm willing to have in my player pool for tonight. Let's move now to the stacks and talk about Arizona. They are at Coors Field tonight, taking on Chris Flexen. I think they're the most obvious stack in the slate, and they're going to be our top stack as well. Flexen has made three starts for the Rockies. It hasn't looked great. He has a 6.02 skill interactive ERA with a 14% strikeout rate and an 11% walk rate. Obviously, that is a small sample, but it's a continuation of What's happening earlier on this year for Flexen? There is a reason he was designated for assignment by the Mariners. And Arizona's offense is still absolutely fine. They have a 109 WRC plus against righties, 
with a 184 ISO. And now you put that in a great park. So I think we have no choice but to be high on Arizona here and feel pretty good in doing so. We've seen Jace Peterson batting pretty high for this team, roughly sixth, uh, because they're facing a righty for tonight. And he is playing entire games. He's not hitting for any power, but he will run. So I'm not super, super in love with it because the Rockies tend to be pretty good at suppressing uh, opposing running. But, you know, for $2,900 in this park, batting sixth, I think that's enough for Peterson to be in our player pool, even though I'm not in love with it. I think there's still enough there to feel good about it, especially if it allows us to get to Corbin Carroll within this stack, which I really want to do. So uh, Peterson, uh, find enough option, all things considered, for tonight. For our second stack, it's kind of an easy one because it's uh, stacking against the pitcher who's been pretty good this year, Clark Schmidt. Uh, he's facing the Braves tonight. And... I, that's the one reason I'm here. It has nothing to do with Schmidt, honestly. It's really just about how good Atlanta's offense is. Among all the parks on tonight's slate, the one with the highest temperature by a pretty wide margin is Atlanta, 94 degrees. No other park on the slate is above 83 degrees, and only one other one is above 76. So if you want good hitting weather, Atlanta is the place to go for it, and Schmidt just happens to be the guy who's pitching there. Over his past eight smarts, starts, I actually think that Schmidt's been getting better. He's throwing more forcing fastballs and fewer sinkers. And in that time, he has a 4.14 skill interactive ERA. His ERA is 4.03. So he's pitching well, but this is a big step up in competition. He faced a lot of bad teams during that stretch. And the Braves are nuts. They have a 122 WRC plus against righties with a 222 ISO as a team, mind you. So if we're a better fight slate for stacking, I would not go with them here because I respect Schmidt a lot, but it's not a good slate for stacking. So I do think the Braves make a lot of sense here. And if they were to start tracking the popular, which they could because their implied total is pretty high, maybe then you want to look elsewhere. But even then, I do still feel like they're a good stack. Part of the reason why I feel good about that is that Schmidt has struggled more with lefties and righties this year. He has an 18% strikeout rate against lefties compared to 26% against righties. So the stack becomes a bit less uneasy when you focus on the lefties. Hopefully Ozzy Albies can play because he left last night's game early and he'd be a big loss to the left-handed side of things, but I'd still be here on the Braves, even if Albies cannot go. Finally, it seems like the Pirates are going to start Quinn Priester tonight. Um, I actually don't mind stacking either side of this game. We'll talk about the Mets here against Priester, and then we'll talk about the Pirates in things to watch. We're going to assume here that Priester is a starter for the Pirates. They did not officially announce that as a case as of yet. Priester, up to five starts in the majors. His ERA is 8.75. His skill interactive ERA is 5.40. And honestly, that's not super unexpected because he was getting ground balls in AAA, but the plate discipline numbers were not pristine yet, and it led to a 4.31 ERA there. The ground balls are there in the majors, too. So I think that he's been a bit unlucky to let up five home runs across those first five starts. But it's worth noting, two of those home runs came against the Guardians, and that's not a high-power team, so that's kind of rough. And the Mets, despite their massive issues as a team, still have a good offense. They have a 111 WRC Plus against righties with a 43% hard hit rate and a low strikeout rate. So they're a super tough opponent. So I do like Priester long-term. I think that the ground balls are super enticing. I just think that we can stack against him for the time being. Now, we talked a lot about Brandon Nimmo on the show uh, recently. The home run binge has stopped for him. He has not had one since July 21st, and he's playing through a quad injury right now. But even just the month of August, when he's played through that injury, he is still lofting the ball more than he was before. He's probably not going to run, so I'm not as into him as I was. But with the salary back down to 3000 I'm okay going here, even after lowering expectations, for him a little bit. Let's go now to things to watch. As mentioned, I'm worried about pitch count for Max Reed and Tyler Glass now. Glass now has not pitched yet in August. They said he's a full go, but I don't think full go means full pitch allotment right now. I have Glass now projected for 80 pitches, and honestly, that might be a bit ambitious. That's still a good number of strikeouts for him, 80 pitches is, but. It's pretty tough. As for Freed, he's gone 72 and 79 pitches in his first two starts back. I have him for 85 tonight. I think they're kind of being a little bit conservative with him. 
So he's also got the highest strikeout guy to begin with the Yankees better against lefties and righties. So I don't mind if you want to take a swing at those two guys. So they do still grade out decently well in my strikeout projections, even with low pitch count projections. But um, I think you want to keep in mind that they do have some pretty serious red flags. I mentioned before, I like the Pirates offense. They're facing Carlos Carrasco, who is still really struggling. He's let up a 51% hard hit rate across his past 12 starts since his velo stabilized. Pirates offense, 103 WRC plus against righties. I think they could be uh, an offense that goes a bit overlooked because they're not a high profile offense. Probably won't have super high implied totals. So if you want to get, get a bit different, uh, you know, if you're going to Arizona with the chalky route there, maybe use the Pirates on the opposing side as being the differentiator stack. Finally, it's okay to check out the Rockies tonight. Just do so in moderation. They're facing Merrill Kelly, who has made four starts since coming off the IL, and he's looked like his typical impressive self. So not inclined to go there from that perspective, but it's just course Field. They're well below Arizona for me. Well, believe in the Pirates, but it's still something uh, to check out the, the Rockies. Finally, let's do some dinger calls for tonight. The boarding one, Corbin Carroll at Coors Field, taking on a guy who's really struggling right now. I adore Corbin Carroll, so let's go with him. Corbin Carroll, the boring home run call for tonight. The fun one is kind of a similar guy to Carroll, where he's got some speed, got some power, but it's Michael Harris, and Harris, I think getting a bit better recently, hitting the ball pretty hard of late, so he may move up in the order of Albies can't play, which is not a bad thing. I would prefer to have Albies in there, but hey, you know, even if Harris is batting ninth, I'm still okay with him. So Michael Harris will be the fun home run call joining Corbin Carroll for today. That's all we got for today here on the Solo Shop. Back with you once again tomorrow talking about uh, both MLB DFS and PGA DFS later on as well. Get both those by subscribing to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow Fandor Research at Fandor Research. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. This has been the solo shot right here on the Fanduel Podcast Network.